Have you heard about the faith and trust? In this lesson, we will learn how to truly seek God's wisdom without letting other voices shape our thoughts and actions. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. And today's lesson is Faith and Trust. Devotional reading is Psalms 56. Background scripture is Proverbs 3rd chapter verses 1 through 12. And our key verse is Proverbs 3rd chapter verse 5. Today's date is January 14, 2024. Let's start with the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the inspired wisdom you have revealed to us in scripture. Help us to listen and follow your word. Show us how we can be more attentive to the direction of your spirit so that we might have lives of wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Lesson aims. Identify principles that lead to a blessed life. Explain why fear of the Lord is foundational to other proverbial principles. And three, make a plan to identify and change any area of life to align more closely with the Lord's will by application of a proverbial principle. Lesson introduction. Who do you consider to be an influential figure? Maybe you have a specific writer, podcast host, or teacher in mind. When the writer thinks about the people who have influenced him, he immediately thinks of his Bible college professor. After graduating, he kept and organized all his notes from their classes for future reference. These notes even accompanied him during his time as an overseas missionary. He trusted those professors' knowledge and wisdom and wanted to ensure he wouldn't forget their teachings. One of the earliest influential figures in a person's life is a parent. Most parents want to see their children succeed and will teach them to be kind, thoughtful, and intelligent individuals. Parents who follow Jesus will also want their children to seek God's wisdom and develop a personal relationship with Jesus. The book of Proverbs encourages us to listen to the teachings of a father to his son. Whether or not our parents have taught us God's wisdom, we can learn from this fatherly figure and apply his wisdom to our lives. Lesson Context The book of Proverbs is often thought to have been written by King Solomon. Proverbs 1 and 1. He was known for his wisdom and came up with over 3,000 proverbs, making him a fitting author for the book of wisdom literature. Additionally, the text attributes two other sections to Agur, which is Proverbs, the third chap Proverbs 30, verse 1, and King Lemuel. Although we have little information about them, the text doesn't specify when these texts were compiled into the form of Proverbs we have today, or who the original audience was, the importance of Proverbs lies in its wisdom teachings rather than in its authors, dates of writing, or original readers. Anyone can learn and apply the wisdom found in the book of Proverbs. While some may find it disjointed, the book is divided into five sections. An Introduction to Wisdom. Proverbs chapters 1 through 9, Proverbs of Solomon, Words of the Wise, Words of Agur, Proverbs 30, and Works of King Lemuel, Proverbs 31. The first section emphasizes the importance of seeking wisdom from the Lord, often from a father's perspective, advising his son. Except for Proverbs 3 and 5, today's scripture follows a consistent pattern in the poetic order of each pair of verses. The father starts by giving his son a negative command, followed by a positive command. Each section concludes with a promise for the son. Lesson scriptures. Proverbs, third chapter, verses one through eight. Verse one. My son, forget not my law, 
but let thine heart keep my commandments. Proverbs emphasizes passing down God's wisdom through parental teaching. A father's guidance equivalent to God's law is crucial. The heart representing a person's core in the Old Testament is highlighted in Proverbs. The advice is for the son to cherish and heed his father's instructions to avoid potential problems. Verse 2, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. When children respect their parents, they can expect to live long and prosperous lives. As promised by the Lord in Exodus, the 20th chapter and the 12th verse. This promise is contrasted with the fate of those who pursue evil which leads to death according to Proverbs 11 chapter 19 verse. Those who do not follow God's commands will not thrive on earth. Proverbs 10th chapter and the 30th verse. By honoring their parents, children gain wisdom and set themselves on a path to a successful life. The father also describes wisdom as providing a long life in Proverbs 3rd chapter verse 16. While a long life is not guaranteed, Seeking wisdom from godly parents is the foundation of a flourishing life. In Hebrew culture, peace is not just the absence of conflict, but also includes ideas of prosperity and harmony. 1 Samuel 7, chapter, verse 14, Jeremiah the 29th chapter, verse 7, and Isaiah the 57th chapter, verses 18 through 19. These are the aspects that the father is most concerned about for his son. Verse 3. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. In the Old Testament, God emphasizes mercy and truth. He describes transformed hearts, valuing actions stemming from these qualities. Seeking wisdom fosters such character development. The use of necklaces as symbols of honor in ancient times is reflected in Genesis the 40th chapter verse 42 and Daniel, the fifth chapter, verse 29, highlighting the importance of virtues. The son is urged to embody a life of mercy and truth, as neglecting these virtues is viewed as rebellious. The command to write them on the heart echoes Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verses six through eight. Stressing, stressing their internationalization, such virtues, such virtues should be visible in a wisdom-filled life, reflecting Christ's method, Christ's message through God's Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3rd chapter and the 3rd verse. Verse 4. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Finding favor means being highly regarded as seen in Daniel the 1st chapter and the ninth verse. Children following God can receive favor from both people and God. Exemplified in 1 Samuel, 2nd chapter, 26. A good understanding reflects integrity and insight leading to righteous action, developed by seeking God's wisdom and living in obedience. This character pleases God and is acknowledged by others. Peter urged believers to live in a way that glorifies God before unbelievers. Cultivating a good name and reputation over time benefits personally and honors God, revealing him to others. Verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Relying on things and people instead of God can lead to disappointment or destruction. Psalms 52 and 7, Isaiah 42nd chapter, verse 17, Jeremiah 17th chapter, the 5th verse. A father's goal is for his son to trust in the Lord for lasting wisdom. As God is the source of salvation, those who trust in the Lord receive blessings. Psalms 37, 3 through 7, Jeremiah 17th chapter, verses 7 through 8. Trusting with all your heart involves total commitment, akin to loving and devoting yourself to the Lord. Proverbs advises against pride and warns against relying solely on one's understanding. Thinking you're wiser than God leads to failure. Proverbs 28, 26, verse 18 and 12, 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, verse 18 through 19, verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Recognizing God involves acknowledging his work, maintaining a close relationship, and following his plans. Submission to God means acknowledging his power and presence. 
trusting him for guidance despite life's trials. Relying on God's wisdom and righteousness through Jesus brings peace, ensuring he leads us through challenges. Verse 7, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Trusting and submitting to God contrasts and relying solely on our wisdom. Seeking God's guidance, not presuming we know best, is wise. God, the source of wisdom, offers it through his spirit. Thus, we should shun pride and seek his wisdom. Solomon's story serves as a cautionary tale. He received wisdom but didn't follow it, leading to heartache. Fearing the Lord entails reverence, awe, and trust. Incompatible and self-perceived wisdom, humility is essential. Those who fear the Lord gain true wisdom, delighting God, and Christians urged to respect God. God live in a way that reflects this. Respecting God involves consciously and avoiding wrongdoing. Steering clear of evil requires a mindset shift toward faith, obedience, and turning away from sin. Psalms 34, 11 through 14. Verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. This verse starts with a Hebrew saying that's hard to translate. Navel is the right word in Hebrew, but the ancient Greek translation uses body instead. Maybe the Hebrew's text is using a part to mean the whole, like a healthy navel represents a healthy body. Marrow is in most bones. It makes blood cells and gives energy. But the writer of Proverbs might not have known that. A well-fed body has marrow and strong bones. Job chapter 21 Verse 24, humility, fear of Lord and obeying him makes a person whole. A son who follows his father's teaching gets the promised health. Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verses 20 through 22. But someone's status doesn't show what's in their heart. People might have some health and wholeness on earth, but scriptures say God will wipe away tears and there won't be any more death or pain. Revelations, the 21st chapter, verse 4. These are our questions today. Write your answers in the comments below this video. Number one, how do you make sure that you trust the Lord completely? Number two, what are some ways to get past the barriers that stop you from completely surrendering to God? And number three, how did you rely on the argument that this verse is unreliable because even those who fear the Lord still get sick? Conclusion. In 2022, a study found that most people now spend around two and a half hours every day on social media, which is a big jump from the one hour daily average 10 years ago. Social media has gained authority in many people's lives, even if the voice behind it may not be truly wise or knowledgeable. It's important to consider whether we are truly seeking God's wisdom or letting other voices shape our thoughts and actions. And I thought to remember, God's children seek the wisdom of their Heavenly Father. Our Sunday school teacher training will be on a Thursday from eight, from 7 to 8. I will post the exact date and time in our community tab. Just keep your eyes out down there for it. If you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Share this lesson. Get into a Bible study group, whether in person or online. Get your shots. Wear your mask. Stay six feet apart, love each other, pray for each other, and I will see you all next week.